Hi there, today I'm going to be walking through how you can loop through line items that you get from Google Sheets within Zapier. And before I go any further, I just want to say that everything I'm going to cover here today is covered within this blog post. So I'll put this link in the description of the YouTube video so you can follow along later. The example we're going to use for this Zap is this customer database Google Sheet, which contains things like email address, phone number, order number, and the person's first name. So the example I'm using here is that we want to send SMS and email notifications to customers if their order is going to be delivered today. So that's where we're going to use column E here and the delivery today checkboxes. And as I'll show you later on, if their order is going to be delivered today, then we're going to send them an SMS notification and an email to let them know that. So this is the example we're going to be going through. And everything is kicked off here with a schedule trigger by Zapier and it's going to run at 9 a.m. So people receive these texts, hopefully when they're just sitting at their desks about to start their workday. And then the first action we're going to use here is the find many spreadsheet rows with line item support. And we're going to pull in this customer database Google Sheet. And then the lookup column we're going to use is the delivery today column. I'll zoom in here a bit for you guys. It's the delivery today column and the lookup value is true because we only want to pull in these rows that are true. One thing to note about this find many spreadsheet rows with line item support action is that it's limited to only pulling in 10 rows at a time. So if you want to pull in more than 10 rows at a time from Google Sheets and loop through them, I've got another blog post that will show you how to overcome this limitation. It's this Zapier Google Sheets quick start guide. Take a look at this and this will show you how you can bring in more than 10 rows from Google Sheets at a time. Okay, so then the next part of this is we're going to use the looping by Zapier action and the create loop from line items event. And then here we're going to bring in the first name, order number, email and phone. And we're going to select the rows from step number two that pull in all our values for first name, order number, email and phone. And then you'll notice here that the maximum number of iterations you can do in Zapier using this action is 500. And once again, if you want to overcome this limitation, you're going to have to use nested looping and webhooks. And once again, I've got you covered for that. If you want to overcome that 500 iteration limit, then take a look at, bear with me, the Zapier for each loop quick start guide. I've got links in here that will show you how you can overcome that 500 iteration limit. So check those out. Okay. So now we've set up our looping action. We're pulling in all the columns from step number two that contain all the information that we want to iterate over. And then in step number four here, we pull in the email iteration variable from step three, we pull in the order number iteration variable, the first name, and once again, the order number iteration variable. And we use these within the subject line in the email body. So what's gonna happen here is this zap is going to loop through each of these three email addresses, phone numbers, and order numbers. And one by one, it's going to send an email to each of those email addresses and populate the subject line and the body using the information from each of these rows in turn. And then it's a very similar setup for sending SMS. I've used the Telnex app here to send SMS. And if you want more information on how to get set up with Telnex and send SMS, I've linked to two blog posts here the Marketo two-way SMS using Telnex and Zapier. And then the Marketo SMS marking with Telnex posts is just a good overall post about Telnex and why, you want, and why you might want to use them for your SMS messaging. So if you want to get set up with sending SMS using Telnex, check out those two posts. The setup here is very similar where we're pulling in the phone number iteration variable, the first name iteration variable, and the order number iteration variable. So once again, we're going to get iterate through all three of the phone numbers and send a different text to each person 
based on their first name and order number. Now you might be wondering, how can I do certain things only once after the loop has completed? And the way we do that is we use a filter. And in this filter, we say, if the loop iteration is last variable, we pull this in from step three, loop iteration is last. If this is equal to true, that means that the loop has finished all its iterations. So all the actions we put after this filter will only be carried out once. So these two actions before the filter, they'll get carried out for each iteration of the loop. So in this case, we've got three instances of deliveries today. So these two actions will each be carried out three times. However, these two actions are after the filter, so they'll only be carried out once. And we use these two actions just to send a summary email and summary SMS. So in this case, we're going to pull in all the row values for first name, order, email, and phone number into a single email and a single text message. So here we pull in all that same information again. And to show you what this looks like, so I'll zoom in here again for you guys. So this action, sorry, this action here that runs before the filter will run three times and it sends these first three emails. And then this summary email runs after the filter. So it only runs once. And as I showed you, it contains the summary information of all the orders that will be delivered today. And we can see that here, delivery notification summary for April 1st. And then similarly for SMS, I have a screenshot of all the texts I received to my phone. This, this action here runs three times and sends these three SMSs to all of those individuals. And then this one action here, which is after the filter in step number six, only runs once, and it sends a summary text containing all the order information of that day. One thing you might have noticed from this post here is if I scroll up here, you'll notice that these email addresses, we got email one first, which is as expected, but then we got email six before email number three. And this is a known issue with the looping by Zapier action is that you're not guaranteed that email three will be sent before email six. If the order that the iterations execute in is important to you, then you can look at sorry about that you can look at these two posts here so you can look at using either webhooks or delays so i'll zoom out here so if you use webhooks to do the looping instead of the looping by zapier action you can always ensure that iteration number one goes before iteration number two goes before iteration number three and similarly you can also use delays where you use the loop iteration number in the delay so that the first iteration will be delayed by one minute, the second iteration will be delayed by two minutes, the third iteration will be delayed by three minutes. And using these delays, you can ensure that iteration number one will always complete before iteration number two will always complete before iteration number three. So if the order that the loop executes in is important to you, then I'd recommend taking a look at either using webhooks or delays. And one final thing I'll mention is if you actually want to send emails to people and put them into production, I'd recommend using a different action to send emails because this email by Zapier often runs into rate limit issues where it will complain that you're sending too many emails in too short a span of time. So in that case, maybe try using Gmail or another email app like Mandrill that will allow you to send a lot of emails in short succession. So I hope this example was useful for you so you could get to grips with how to loop through line items that you pull in through Google Sheets. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to pull in more than 10 rows at a time, which is a limitation of this find many spreadsheets row with line item support, then take a look at the uh, 
Zapier, Google Sheets Quick Start Guide to show you how to pull in as many rows as you want from Google Sheets. And if you want to overcome the 500 iteration limit that exists with the looping by Zapier action, then take a look at the Zapier for each loop quick start guide, which will show you how you can loop as many times as you want by using nested loops. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments on this video, or you can comment on this blog post here. Have a great day.